Hello there, this is our ASG particle called Etifolium. I did a little mini series on this tree in midsummer to early autumn because a lot of the leaves were turning very early autumn colours. By early autumn those leaves dried up very quickly and it sort of died off. It's the 26th of November today and um, as you can see a lot of those leaves are still on the tree and haven't naturally fallen off like the rest of the leaves. Please bear with me because it's, it's very cold here this morning and um, there's a lot of information I've got to try and remember to, to talk about. Now, I was past the tree the other day and I noticed a lot of dieback at the top of the tree and there's a lot of nasty dark wood going on, a lot of dark colours which is indicating a major problem, um, possibly an infection or botrytis. Now I believe botrytis is, is like an infection. Um, it's it's always about I've been told it's in the soil and and what have you and it can overwinter on trees and it can attack through the roots, the buds or the bark. My good friend Neil in our Japanese maple group tells me and uh, he believes that it's not a root issue this with this tree because there's no disease or, or signs of damage lower down. And because the problem is up top, it looks like the infection has got through the, the buds or the, the bark. Now I believe it's possibly through the bark because early spring this year the tree had a good thin and out. So there was been a lot of wounds to some of the branches as you can see there, a lot of nobs which were left on the tree and that's possibly been the, the cause of Obviously the, the prune at the time, a bit of infection has got into the tree and it's been working its way over the summer. Now to bear with me. I'll show you some of these these branches which is very dark, almost black wood, which is always an indicator a major problem there. So if I show you low down on the tree, this tree basically forks off into three major upright stems. The one on the left seems to be okay. The two on the right, which basically fork from the same point, they seem to be the ones that's diseased and damaged. Um, I believe that the problem is already in those stems and it's worked its way almost right away down there. Because if I go up a little bit to the back, where the start of the early colour leaf change in the summer was, you can see that wood, wood to the left, it's it's already black. So those branches low down is, is already well diseased and, and dead. Um, the same on this side. There's a lot of wood here, which is very dark as well and died off. So I think those two major stems is beyond help really. If I show you the, the left stem, you have a natural bit of dye back there, which is pale wood. But the other wood there, the other branch it is it's nice reddish colour. So that appears okay. You obviously have different streaking of different colours. And obviously this bit was pruned as well. And as you can see, it was, I'd noticed sort of late spring, early summer that a lot of the pruning parts were dying back a, a dark colour. Normally it goes a, a, a greyish, pale colour. And I thought, well, that doesn't appear to be 
as normal, not all the snubs went a dark colour, but like I can see a lot of dark bits instead of just pale like this here just pale wood is what you normally get on the dye box so whether that's uh, been an issue I don't know so basically the tr there was a few different options um, the other day when we were talking about it in our group was having a, a, a dig out the roots dig the tree up have a look see for issues and stuff but I didn't really want to do that the tree's been in the ground six years now it has been an issue and it's it's going to be well anchored in there um, possibly you could add to further stress and obviously that to me the issues up top really um, my good friend Pat in the group suggested a, a treatment last night which you, you water in or you can spray on the tree and that has microorganisms or something in there which work their way into the tree and sort of attack the, the disease and I'll give you more information on that when I, when I learn a bit more and I get that delivered in the post Hopefully within a week I'll have that and I'll, I'll show you the treatment I'll, I'll try with the with that product. Um, but in the meantime it looks like I'm going to have to start pruning some of this damaged dark wood out. Because that dark wood, if you don't already know, sort of tends to spread. And you have to really cut it out and sort of destroy it. You usually burn it. Um, so I'm going to have to do a bit of pruning on that now. It's a real shame because this tree is one of my favourites. In six years it's doubled from a, a three foot tree there to a six foot plus tree. And as you can see it's going to be completely sort of out of proportion. The only part you can see is that left stem that's going to be left and I believe by the time I prune those right hand sections those two stems to the right there that's forking up from the bottom I don't think it's going to be anything left so I think in the future the tree is going to have to be sort of dug up either repotted or sort of straightened up with that left section and made into a, a thinner tree um, sometimes when problems like this with the garnet to the right there when I had 70 odd percent of dye back on that tree the tree actually turned out to be a better shaped tree before I knew it and um, as you can see there's a lot of branching on this tree it's thinned out nicely in the spring it's going to be pretty pretty bare once the start so this is the last time you'll you'll see this tree as it is so what I'll do is I'm going to sterilize my pruning shears with disinfectant and water and every cut I make I've got to wash with the disinfectant and dry it before each cut to stop any further spread so Excuse the camera shake, my hands are absolutely numb here. We had a bad frost last night and it's not the best time to be pruning the tree but that wood's got to come out, that damaged wood. So I'll update you within the week I, I imagine so I'll see you then. Bye for now.